Dr. Jeff Reiterman is my guest on Truth Out Interviews. He is the Vice President of the Board of Directors of the San Francisco Bay Chapter of Physicians for Social Responsibility and also a retired Chief of Cardiology at Kaiser Hospital in Richmond, California. And he was also on the City Council in, uh, for Richmond as well. His article on Truth Out is called Monsanto's Herbicide Linked to Fatal Kidney Disease Epidemic. Could it topple the company? It's been widely read on Truth Out. And he's here to discuss the correlation between the herbicide the in Roundup, or at least the key ingredient in that herbicide, and the epidemic of chronic kidney disease in many parts of the world. Hello, Jeffrey. Uh, welcome to uh, Truth Out Interviews. Thanks for having me. You know, I think most people know what the herbicide Roundup is. It's popularly used not only here in the United States, but worldwide. But can you talk about this recent medical finding that has linked herbicide, or at least the key ingredient in, er, in, the, in Roundup, to chronic kidney disease? It was a little shocking to me that I didn't know about this uh, fatal kidney disease epidemic. Uh, El Salvador has more people dying of kidney disease per capita now than anywhere else in the world and that was something I wasn't aware of and it, uh, Honduras and Nicaragua also have a huge mortality from kidney disease and it's also in India and Sri Lanka as well. and uh, some very interesting papers have come out about this uh, this real tragedy uh, the first thing is it's different than most of the kidney disease we see here most of what we see in the US is kidney disease from high blood pressure or diabetes. But this is a wholly different uh, kind of disease. It primarily attacks a different part of the kidney, the kidney tubule. And uh, what's been um, clear is that it mainly happens in people who do very hard work in very hot uh, climates and are also exposed to both um, heavy metals and herbicides, uh, primarily glyphosate, this uh, uh, Roundup uh, is the trade name for glyphosate. It's very good at binding metals and that seems to be the, the key in this, in this case because in all the places that this epidemic has happened there's been a combination of herbicides and heavy metals, either heavy metals in the water or heavy metals in the soil. And the proposed mechanism is the glyphosate binds the heavy metal and that complex lasts for a very, very long time, over 20 year half-life. And it can either be inhaled or ingested or absorbed through the skin. And uh, usually the liver uh, is uh, the organ that picks up these heavy metals because you know we use metal we have iron in our in our red blood cells we use zinc other places and little bits of heavy metals all kinds of places and the the liver usually kind of picks them out of the circulation and sends them to where they need to go but the uh, the roundup or the glyphosate complex with the metal avoids that liver detection and when the glyphosate and the heavy metal reaches the kidney the kidney tubule, the very low pH, uh, the, the very acidy environment makes the metal split off and attack the kidney tubule. Now, I just want to say this is a, this is a theory. <clears throat> what there is to back up the theory is that the people getting the disease have been exposed to the glyphosate and have been exposed to heavy metals and in Sri Lanka they've actually um, taken samples of the hair and the nails and the urine in these these farmers and they find that they have high levels of cadmium and sometimes arsenic. So it's a very plausible theory but it, it remains a theory. Uh, it was plausible enough that El Salvador and Sri Lanka uh, both banned glyphosate. So here's where the story gets uh, <clears throat> a little more complicated and a little more interesting. So you have a herbicide which is the most common herbicide used worldwide. You have a theory that suggests that this uh, worldwide fatal kidney epidemic is being caused by a combination of the glyphosate and the heavy metal. You have two major com uh, countries who are suffering that have banned it and then you have in El Salvador the US trying to force 
uh, the country of El Salvador to buy seeds from Monsanto whose only real advantage is that the seeds will turn into crops that are resistant to that herbicide. This product, Monsanto, uh, sorry, that Monsanto makes, Roundup, plus the seeds, these are these account for almost 50% of their profits. I mean, this is, these are huge money makers for the company. Exactly. Um, basically, the theory behind Monsanto's seeds is to put in the seeds the resistant gene to the herbicide. Uh, that is what makes it a GMO seed. And so once you remove uh, the, the herbicide from the equation, then the seeds basically have no real advantage. Uh, so why would a country buy seeds that uh, are coated with a gene for an herbicide that they've banned uh, and are not going to use? And why would the United States be demanding that El Salvador buy these seeds Right, and I'm sure that Monsanto probably gives a lot of money to uh, not only the politicians who get elected, but those politicians who have influence over uh, the diplomats, especially at the executive level. So that, you know, the, the, the connection between money and politics and, and corporate interests is, is an old one, and, and certainly as long as uh, our republic's been in existence, it's certainly been in business influence within the political realm. But WikiLeaks, these cables that WikiLeaks has, has released really show the kind of political maneuvering that's going on behind the scenes. I mean, at one point they're lobbying the Vatican, <laughs> and there's a reason behind that. Maybe you could talk about that. Well, they're lobbying the Vatican. They were, uh, because of course they feel that the Vatican's going to have influence in Europe and around the world. So will can they find a cardinal or somebody high up in the Vatican who will take up um, Monsanto and really push uh, the GMO seeds in Europe. Uh, they trying to punish France because France didn't want to use some of the GMO products. And so uh, they basically the using trade uh, as a um, an element of war here in, in a real sense. Uh, economic war and it's one thing if you have a product that uh, you sincerely believe and the science shows that it's going to increase the yield, it's going to feed the world, but now you have a product which is based on science which is suggesting that hey the, the uh, herbicide may be uh, the leading cause of a worldwide fatal kidney epidemic. But uh, imagine that uh, you're in El Salvador and all of a sudden all your young men are getting this disease. It makes absolute sense to be uh, uh, precautionary and ban the herbicide. And suppose Egypt decides to do that too now. And suppose Thailand and Mexico is talking about it. All of a sudden the whole technology that Monsanto is based on begins to be technology that areas uh, in the third world particularly say uh, we don't want and without that growth the company becomes vulnerable. What happens if this, to the stock price of Monsanto if all of a sudden it, it comes to be true that the glyphosate uh, cannot be used safely because that's really the central uh, pillar to their temple. I mean if you remove the glyphosate all of a sudden the seeds have no special advantage and uh, their revenue goes down by half. Let's talk about that postscript that you had at the end of the article that uh, talked about some changes that are going on. The US uh, announced or at least it was published in the New York Times and uh, Dar Jamail had an article in, in Truth Hat a couple of days ago uh, which showing or suggesting that the US is backing off uh, on its pressuring around the GMO seeds. Um, it's hard to know exactly what is making that influence. Uh, Committee in Solidarity with the People of El Salvador, CISPES had a petition and had been asking people to uh, contact their Congress people to put pressure on Secretary of State John Kerry. So somewhere along the line uh, the pressure has at least gotten the U.S. to back off on the pressuring. 
that $277 million of aid money hasn't been released yet, so we haven't really uh, had any kind of victory we can claim, but uh, one of the articles used the title something like The Mouse That Roared. Here's uh, Tiny El Salvador taking on the United States and, and Monsanto, and, and it looks like uh, at getting them to reverse policy, which I think is huge. All right. Well, Jeff, I want to thank you for being on Truth Out Interviews. Well, it's really uh, a pleasure. Thank you for running the story. There's going to be a lot more to be said about this uh, chronic kidney disease of unknown etiology. Uh, I'm continuing to research it, and I know others are as well. And let's hope that we let's hope that we can do something for these uh, these poor farmers. Well, you can read Jeff's piece on Truth Out. It's called. Monsanto's herbicide linked to fatal kidney disease epidemic. Could it topple the company? I'm Ted Asregade. I want to thank you for watching Truth Out Interviews, and we'll see you next time.